When he walks among us, all that he does, all of his mercy and all of his love, the pen of the writer could write every day. Even this world could never contain just how I've been blessed. The warmth in the winter, the flowers in spring, the laughter of summer, the changing of leaves, food on my table, a good place to sleep, clothes on my back, and shoes on my feet. Oh, I have been blessed. I have been blessed, God so good to me. Precious are His thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them, there's not enough time. So I'll just thank Him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. Arms that will raise, a voice that can talk, hands that can touch, and legs that can walk, ears that can listen, eyes that can see oh I've got to praise him for all that he does cause I have been blessed I have been blessed God's so good to me precious are his thoughts of you and me no way I could count them there's not enough time so I'll just thank him for being so kind God has been so good I have been blessed a shoulder to lean on when I'm down a rock where he hides me when I'm overwhelmed the place where I'm sheltered under his wings he's not just a song the reason I sing I have been blessed I have been blessed, God's so good to me. Precious are His thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them, there's not enough time. So I'll just thank Him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. A shoulder to lean on. When I am down, a rock where he hides me. When I'm overwhelmed, the place that I'm sheltered under his wings. It's not just a song, he's the reason I sing. I have been blessed. I have been blessed, God's so good to me. Precious are his thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them, there's not enough time. So I'll just thank Him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. God has been good, so good. God has been good, so I have been blessed. I hope you can say the same thing today on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Thank you for tuning in for a midday moment with Pastor Ponder coming to you from the house here at New Salem Baptist Church and it's a joy to welcome all of you Good to see Miss Mitchell and the Abbots always tuning in. And Miss Taylor, I'm going to sing one for you just in a second. I thank you for that request for the old rugged cross. So let me, let's have a word of prayer, and then I'll sing a verse and a chorus of that great song. Thank you for asking. She gave me a couple of options. She gave me two or three suggestions. Uh, but let's, let's pray together, continue to pray for those that are sick, those that are hurting, families that are grieving today. So many needs, so many concerns. Father, I do praise you and thank you for the privilege of prayer. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we can come into your presence knowing you hear us. 
in knowing that, that your heart is tuned to our hearts. And Father, we find great comfort in that. And Lord, I thank you for the privilege, Lord, just to stop by just for a few minutes on folks' lunch break and bring them a word of encouragement and, a, and maybe a challenge. I pray, God, you bless these few fleeting moments together, that it would be used for your glory, first of all, but also for the encouragement of your people. And Father, I lift before you several names, Lord, that are, that are very real to our hearts this morning. Uh, families that are hurting, I pray a continued blessing on the Edwards family, that you'll continue to bless them, Miss Catherine, Lord, and uh, her mom and dad, and, and their grandparents, and aunts and uncles, as they rally around her. God, I continue to pray for Brother John and Miss Rosemary as they uh, try to, to rebuild after the tornadoes. And that's just a reminder that there's others, many others, Lord, that were hit by those storms in Chattanooga. And I ask for continued blessings on them. I pray a blessing, Father, for our, our nation. That you'll bless the president right down to our local leadership and everybody in between. Give them wisdom. Give them understanding as to what uh, our country needs, what we stand in need of right now. Uh, the economy and our schools. And, Father, so many unanswered questions. God, it's going to need, to, it's going to need a touch. We need desperately uh, your direction and your wisdom. So, Father, I pray your blessings again on every worry and every concern. Father, those that's been shared with us, you know many of those needs and those those families that are worried about finances and mamas and daddies that are worried about their jobs and about their children. And I pray, God, you'd be the, the rock, the anchor, the lily of the valley, all that folks need you to be. Show yourself. Prove yourself to be faithful in the hearts and lives of your people. And we'll give you glory for it all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. I promised Miss Taylor I'd sing one for her. So let me um, let me sing a verse and a chorus for you, Miss Taylor. Thank you for requesting it. Thank you for, for responding to my plea for songs today. Maybe I can get the right key. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Taylor, I would sing another verse, but I'm afraid I'll mess it up without a hymn book right in front of me. So uh, again, thank you. She requested 10,000 Reasons, another great, great song, uh, several good songs, and I appreciate your your willingness to take just a second and, and I challenge you again if you'd like me to sing one for you tomorrow sometime uh, just let me know give me a heads up and I'll do my best to sing you a little bit of it uh, just a small portion of that let me tell you something uh, the more uh, deeper I wade into Dr. Jeremiah's book the more I know beyond a doubt in my mind that God guided me to this thing for this period for a time such as this uh, the title again is um, Living with Confidence in a Chaotic World and uh, 10 lessons uh, so far has been spot on exactly where I found myself in whatever day, whatever moment that was. Week one was stay calm. Lesson two, stay compassionate. Lesson three, stay constructive. Lesson four, stay challenged. Yesterday was stay connected. I, that just blew my mind how God would, would guide that. Um, and the timing of it all to speak directly to who we are as a church. We, we feel like we're disconnected. And um, again, God put this book in front of me weeks ago with, with a challenge to walk through it. And, and as I've walked through it, I, I've discovered that it speaks directly to the every moment. Uh, and, and you'll see what I mean when I tell you that today's lesson is entitled Stay Centered. Centered on Christ specifically. And the text that he recommends, uh, suggests for this lesson is Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Listen to what Paul says to the church at Colossae. Colossians chapter 3, 
Verse number one, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Truly a, a wonderful passage of scripture that's been a blessing to a lot of folks uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, I, I want to I wanna share with you a, 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 a story that Dr. Jeremiah shared in his, in his lesson for today about uh, uh, Martin Luther, uh, the great um, theologian from back in the day, the Protestant Reformation and all that, you know the name. The story says that somebody came knocking on his door one day and um, asked, does, does uh, Dr. Martin Luther live here? And he said, no, he died. Christ lives here now. And I thought, what a great, what a great, great story that is. What a great line to speak to what exactly what Paul is sharing with us here in his text. Uh, the idea of seeking after who God is. The idea of connecting with him. The idea of us staying centered on him and Christ and Christ alone. There are so many different places I could go in this passage. It's a glorious uh, piece of scripture that I think speaks loudly uh, into this moment that we are uh, we find ourselves in today, but the very idea that Paul focuses on his relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and here's what he says in Colossians three verse number three: For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Uh, in the past, at the moment of our salvation, we died with Christ, but in this present time. Paul would remind us that we are hidden with Christ in God. And if I stay centered on my relationship with him, scary days removed. If all of all that's going on, all your concerns and all your uh, issues that you're battling in life, if we can still keep ourselves focused and centered on him, because the truth of the matter is there's going to be times that I, you, we don't feel very secure in this world. But if I can remember that my life is hidden with Christ, then it's a miraculous transformation that happens that everything changes. Uh, I, I, I can embrace the craziness around me. I, I, can, I, can, I can somehow accept the, the unanswered questions that's before me with every passing moment. And if I can come to the place where recognizing, focusing his control over everything that concerns me, if I stay centered on the fact that everything about my life he is in charge of, he sits on the right hand of God the Father making intercession for us, Paul says. He says, if we're risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. That's right, Miss Teresa. Miss Teresa Edwards just said, he must increase and I must decrease. What a great reminder. Thank you for that, for that sweet testimony. So again, focus on this very truth today. The very idea that we are in Christ, we are in God through our relationship with our Heavenly Father. So if I stay connected with Him, if I stay centered on Him, keep Him at the forefront of our thoughts. And it's awful easy to stay at the house and, and get wrapped up in all the goings on and the concerns and the, the, the lack of this and the lack of, of camaraderie. And I can't be around folks. I can't go to church. I can't this and I can't that and I can't that. But the glorious truth is, who we are in Christ Jesus has never wavered. His faith, our faith that we have in him for his goodness, for his mercy, for his strength, for his provision. Keep that centered. Keep that right at the very heart of your lives and guide us and lead us through these times by only the power of God can we trust him. Amen. Thank you for tuning in for this midday moment for Tuesday, what is April the Wednesday, April the 15th. Look forward to joining you with me one more time tomorrow. Thank you all of you for the tuned in. Hope it's been a blessing to you. We'll see you tomorrow. I love you. Bye-bye.